Let's face it, 2020 has been a nightmare. Winter has brought us massive wildfires in Australia, people eating bats in China, and the President of the United States was impeached. Spring ushered in the coronavirus pandemic, which brought the entire world to a screeching quarantined halt, and Kobe Bryant died. Summer came and went with bad cops killing innocent people, protests, riots, and civil unrest. We don't know about you, but we're ready to put the past behind us and look to the future. Chunky sweaters, falling leaves, and pumpkin spice everything? That's right, it's time for fall. The, the fall, fall of civilization! civilization. It's not looking good for humanity, but there is a little glimmer of hope for our future. And it's just a few weeks away. We're talking about November 3rd, Election Day. Even though this is a presidential election, there are many more candidates on the ballot besides just the president. We want to tell you about Ballot Ready. It's a nonpartisan guide to your entire ballot. From there, you can compare candidates based on stances, issues, biography, or endorsements. Then you can save your choices so they're handy when you're ready to vote. You can even request your absentee ballot or make a plan to vote, whether it's early voting or on election day. This election matters. Make sure you vote, but don't just vote blindly or vote for your preferred political party like a sucker. Vote informed with Ballot Ready. Did you know that only 55% of eligible voters cast their vote in the 2016 election and we could have totally avoided this mess? And 30% of voters that actually take the time to vote leave a large portion of their ballot blank. Local elected officials, they affect our lives every day. They decide who gets prosecuted for crimes. They monitor our quality of drinking water. They decide how our tax money is spent. And it's okay if you're not familiar with every initiative or candidate on your ballot. Just go to BallotReady.org, enter your address, and make a plan to vote and vote informed. Or if you don't have time to vote or just don't care, send us your address and we'll tell you who to vote for because there's nothing we love more than amplifying our own voices. Use your voice. If not for yourself, use it to choose representatives and initiatives that will lift up and support your marginalized friends, family, and community. Get, Get out, out there, there and vote! vote. Well, hello everyone! Welcome back to Family Home Evening! You came back for more! Oh, I'm so happy! We are super stoked tonight because we have two, not one, but two fabulous guests with us. Yes! We've got uh, our sister Tiffany's back. By a popular but de- demand. Welcome, <laughs> Tiffany. Thank you. And we have Courtney! Yeah! Hey guys, it's great to be back. Hooray. So we have, we tried to do a Zoom call so that all of our audio could be equal and we could look at each other and see our facial expressions, but we have the worst internet in all of the world down here in Orange County, California, in the wilds. Makes makes no sense. On the edge of the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) It's not true. There's no reason we shouldn't have good internet. Exactly. We're going to have to... You guys are starting to make Deming look good. (laughs) (laughs) So if you could only see the setup we've got going on, we've got our mics, and then we've each got a cell phone up to the mic. (laughs) So I have Tiffany on my mic. Don't give away our secrets. And we have Courtney on my mic. (laughs) So if there's anything, if there's any funkiness, um, please bear with us. But I I have a feeling this is going to go down as one of the most awesome episodes in Family Home Evening with Bad Mormons podcast history. Right? And besides, we're not a podcast, we're a pirate radio. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. (laughs) So you can repent about that, but (laughs) I just want to apologize first for my porno shoulders being exposed. I didn't have time to put a t-shirt on underneath of my tank top. Oh, my gall. (laughs) Oh, my heck. (laughs) (laughs) That just gamed me. Oh, my gall. That's one, right, Tiff? Is that one? I'm I'm pretty sure, yeah. (laughs) Oh, my gall. (laughs) Oh, my gall. But don't worry, because I'm rocking my Virginity Rocks t-shirt. Classy. I was going to say, I can see your garments over there with your spaghetti straps. But you know what you can't see? My dirty pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you can. <laughs> Jesus can see them, though. Jesus sees everything. I'm glad that we're all together. I wish we could be in the same room, but we can't because the coronavirus fucking sucks. So, uh, what are we all drinking? Tiffany, what are you drinking? I did not get a beverage. I'm so, so sorry. All right. You're out of the pot. You're out of the pirate radio station. (laughs) I'm also a really bad liar, so I can't just make something up. That's true. She's a terrible liar. (laughs) Yeah, the worst. Courtney, what are you drinking? You know, I'm going to go ahead and call this the Thunder from Down Under. Um, (laughs) It's an Australian uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm a a sucker for a Costco sale, and uh, I, I, it's a Mrs. Q Cabernet Sauvignon, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I was about to say, you don't have to sell me on Australia. I fucking love Australia. I love an Australian accent. I love an Australian dude. I love Australian wine. Like, whatever it is. We had a lot of Australian wine. Hand it over to me. Oh yeah, I I can't recall. Coffee too. When you're in your when you're in Costco next, and you see that end cap that has Mrs. Q Cabernet Sauvignon on sale for six ninety nine a bottle, just that keep on going. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'm still drinking my my uh, poolside cocktail because I made a gigantic hydro flask full of it. So vodka with a little bit of mango juice and soda water. Is it mango juice or is it that passion fruit it's that the, I... It's whatever you made. It's in the fridge. <laughs> I don't know. My friend at work gave me some passion fruit, uh, which I had no idea that even grows down here. And so I, I put the juice into some orange juice and it's fucking delicious. It's really good. It's, yeah, bomb. Probably could use it a little bit more in there being that it's all straight vodka. It does kind of taste like hand sanitizer. <laughs> I came, while we were swimming, I was like, here, Mandy, have a drink of my drink. And I was like, there's vodka in it. And as soon as she took a pull, I was like, a lot of it. And then she's just like, it tastes like hand sanitizer. <laughs> this is what I smell 50 times a day at work. It's a fruity hand sanitizer. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm bl- Why am I blind? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to American Hollow. You know, I was going to open a bottle of wine, but uh, I decided I didn't want to drink a full bottle, that and then that was, I realized that was stupid right <laughs> that off was the a bat. Poor choice. But uh, so I'm drinking the On the Rocks. You guys all know how much I love the On the Rocks um, cocktails. I'm drinking the Mai Tai, Ooh. just to stay in the tropical spirit of the the passion fruit, the Lily Koi's that I juiced today. Excellent, excellent. Mm. Um, so delicious. What are we uh, currently watching, listening to? Anybody Reading? got anything good? I just watched Charlotte American... and I. Will... Oh, oh sorry, I was going to say, I, me and Tiffany just watched American <laughs> Hollow last night on our phones. Charlotte together. and I just watched American <laughs> Hollow last night on our phones together. <laughs> Tiffany, tell us about it. What did you think? What's American Hollow? Fill us in. <laughs> well, it's a it's a HBO documentary. I think it's HBO about a family, a lady and a guy who have thirteen children. The man, you need subtitles to understand what he's saying, uh, and then the thirteen children have like 76 children of their own and you get to follow their lives it's super great <laughs> are they living in an apartment in manhattan or you mean we need some more details oh <laughs> you have to watch it to get the details i mean charlotte was there too she i was gonna say well charlotte- the reason so I watched it was because, well, Tiffany said I had to watch it, but that Courtney also really liked it. And I was like, well, Courtney's got impeccable taste. So Courtney. It, 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 it's, it's amazing. It's an it's a, a, a Appalachian family, like they, and they, uh, they live off the land. Like they correct, collect uh, rainwater in uh, buckets. And right. I know I'm under the impression that they don't have like uh, indoor plumbing. And uh, they, they do, but um, they spare go out. I think it's like. Like like rooting, like they they like um, they dig up roots from the ground and like sell them and uh, manage to go to jail um, yeah. and stuff. And uh, it's just uh, it's, it, it, it makes you grateful for what you got. Amen. <laughs> it was it was very interesting. You can't find it on HBO. You can't find it on even Amazon. Like can't find it on anything. We found it on YouTube, so that worked out, and that's how we were able to watch it last night. Courtney, you got anything you're watching? Um, yeah, I, I am going in for a rewatch um, of uh, Shameless. Um, I started that series uh, again uh, a few nights back. I, I just, I just love all the drunken drunkenness in that show. And uh, Joe and I started last week. We uh, started watching the new uh, the new Lovecraft series uh, by Jordan Peele. That, oh. uh, that's come out. Um, yeah, we've watched the first episode so far, and the monsters are really cool. And uh, and 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 yeah, I, I, I'm excited uh, to watch the second episode. We have a date night tomorrow to watch that. Yeah, that sounds really cool. You know what else I heard was good? I, I heard about that one, and I forgot I wanted to watch it, but I also heard, and you guys are going to fucking totally laugh at me, but the new Perry Mason reboot, <laughs> I heard that it's the fucking shit. That's so cool. I like me. Shut up, Perry Tiffany. Mason. I can hear you laughing at me. Who plays Perry Mason? Um, Uh-oh, did we lose you know, Tiffany? I don't know. Yeah, I think we did. That She probably just hung up on us. She's like, I'm done <laughs> with you guys. Podcast is lame. <laughs> I mean, Pirate Radio is amazing. Can't be perfect all the time. Um, 
I was going to say, I also just found out about on A&E cults and extreme beliefs, and that, uh, that's been pretty interesting to talk about. It's mainly just pedophilia all day long. It seems like all of these cults have one thing in common. Mm. They like to diddle little children. <laughs> hey, Tiff, are you back? I'm back. Sweet. I was going to say all I watch ever is Seinfeld. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. It's really fucking funny. <laughs> what is it? Seinfeld? And Seinfeld. Oh, shut up. <laughs> 30 Rock and then Red Dwarf. I keep watching them again and again. Who's in that show? <laughs> uh, Mike, what's his name? Michael somebody? Oh, Kramer. Um, I can't think of his name. It's Jerry Michael. Seinfeld. <laughs> George oh, Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch a really good show um, on Hulu called After Truth. Um, the disinformation, or something about that. It's about how easy it is to fool people on the internet and have them like, believe in Pizzagate and shit like that, and then the effects of it, like, how, like, a guy actually went to uh, the the ping pong pizza place and, like, like shot at the floor because he thought he was rescuing children. Jesus. Oh, my God, people are stupid. We should all watch that and then try the techniques and tactics on our mom and see if they work. (laughs) Well, (laughs) that's true. I don't know if it would... I don't know if it would help. (laughs) Just need to do it for prosperity. Um, I only have one thing to repent. It was brought to my attention that I had said miracle whip that we had found in the church fridge. That is not, I don't just eat handfuls of miracle whip, but I do cool whip. <laughs> That's disgusting. Cool whip is delicious. <laughs> um, so my, they both had whip in the name. My bad. I did not eat miracle whip. I eat cool whip. And miracle whip isn't even just like mayonnaise. It's like worse than mayonnaise. It's like sweet mayonnaise. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what though. Like growing up, mom only had like wheat bread. She'd make herself, which now I'm like, oh dude, I would kill for some of that bread. But we just ate healthy. There was never soda in the house, rarely any candy, whatever. I went to go babysit once and I had a Wonder Bread Miracle Whip craft cheese sandwich. Mm. And holy shit, that blew my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so many, chem- but you don't think chemicals. You're just like, what is this sweet deliciousness? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had that same experience the first time I tasted Top Ramen. Ooh, yeah. I was in, like, the second grade. I was far too old to have never tasted Top Ramen. <laughs> well, see, for me, whenever we visit Dad, we lived on Top Ramen and mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I had yeah, a babysitting experience where my mom kept the uh, my mom kept the house full of, like, junk food and, like, ramen and everything, so I was accustomed to that and Kool-Aid and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then a neighbor lady asked me if I would babysit her kids, and I went over to her house and, uh, they were like total hippies and there was like no sugar and yeah, like no processed foods or anything like that. And I was just like, Ooh, it was an absolute nightmare. I was like, what am I supposed mm-hmm. to make you for dinner? And they're just like, uh, oh, you know, you can make us some bread and honey. And I was just like, Oh, it's funny. I, again. I can only imagine the look on your face since I know you so well, Courtney. <laughs> like, I'm the bamboozle. <laughs> you know, I love, uh, obviously, I love our father dearly, but I will never fucking forget the time that he made us spaghetti because he was all into that health food mm-hmm. shit. We'd shop at Shangri La, right? Uh, whole wheat spaghetti with with tofu, like big, way so too big gross. of chunks of tofu in the tomato <laughs> sauce. But the tofu was like cold in the middle. He just chopped it up and threw it in the sauce. <laughs> and yeah, that's a meal that I'll, that will go down in infamy. <laughs> do Do you remember that, Tiffany, or is that just me? No, I had it too. No. I- of course I do. And Tiffany Charlotte. Well, I also lived in that house, and I also was forced to eat it. Let's talk more about me. <laughs> I thought we were telling babysitting stories, babysitting stories, and I was going to tell you guys about the time that I was babysitting the neighbor in California, and, like, I turned around, and I just turned back to the kid, and he had, like, $100 bills in his mouth, and I was like, what the shit? Right, and mom's like, "Oh my god, we found some, we found Jeff's emergency earthquake stash," and we're like, "We're gonna, you know, we're rich or whatever." And we looked <laughs> right, all around the office. <laughs> we looked all around the office, and we didn't find any more money, but we did find Jeff's like uh, bestiality porn. Oh my god, that's, that's right. right. That's, that was so oh, that's my baby. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I've only heard about this secondhand. I ne- I don't actually like. Was it magazines? Was it no? It was no, videos. it was video VHS. Oh. So if you think about it. Where his office, where his 
his desk was and he had his computer. If you go right above it, it's like it's like cabinets, right? Mm-hmm. Like a kitchen it's like those cabinets, corner right? cabinets. But yeah, and so it, it had it, so it was in the corner, so it was almost like a diamond. So the fascia, kind of the decorative piece, has a little bit of a lip about that big. So he just had them stacked up video tapes on both sides, and they were all porno. That's sick fucker. He's so gross. <laughs> He's so gross. <laughs> uh, we haven't even talked about any of the stories of this motherfucker yet. He's just <laughs> awful. He's a if horrible I can't make it funny, idiot. I won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, when you do finally hear some stories about our ex-stepfather, Jeff, just remember he has bestiality porn. <laughs> I don't remember, I'm going to regret, I don't remember the bestiality porn. I just remember it being just porn, like regular everyday shitty porn, like with girls that looked barely uh, legal, but Tiffany might remember something I don't. Oh, Maybe uh, I, I don't, don't remember. remember, the only thing I remember about that was the girl going down on a donkey or something. That's enough. That's <laughs> enough. Well, this episode will now be titled Babysitting Stories <laughs> from Hell. From Hell. <laughs> I'll write that down. Actually, you know what we should call it because of the subject matter that we've all decided to talk about? We should call it The Roommate from Hell uh, because we're going to be talking about our former roommate, everybody except sh- for Charlotte. Right. Our former roommate, Amanda, whose last name we will not say. Even though I kind of want to because fuck her. But anyway. What were you going to say? Think of... um, Oh, Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. (laughs) The Tiger King. (laughs) We'll call her Amanda Exotic. (laughs) So I'm a little hazy. She was the girl... She's the girlfriend of someone we knew. I think it's a better way to put it. Very... Okay. Girlfriend of someone we knew. Uh, who was, yeah, just introduced to us. So we hung out with this person a lot. Um, and then Amanda was introduced to us through him. Okay. And then how, how did we just, I think we just started like hanging out at the bar and stuff. I don't really remember like the progression of becoming friends and then becoming roommates. Well, she was so nice. <laughs> she was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but for real, like. Well, you'd have to be if you're going to be a monster. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, she seems. She seemed like totally, totally nice and totally fun. We, we, you know, we spent a lot of time at the bars uh, at that time, and uh, um, and we had a lot of parties. And uh, you know, she uh, was always there, and we were really good friends with her boyfriend. And so he was always around, which meant that she was always around. And she seemed like a, you know, really awesome person. Like you know, she, she, she was really nice. Totally nice, and like almost just. Too nice. Yeah, too, almost too nice, really. Like, I mean, in retrospect, you can say that. But at the time, like, when all this shit that we're going to tell you was going down, it was very, very hard for us to believe that, like, she was capable of doing these things because she was so sweet and so complimentary and so just angelic. Yeah, that that shit was fucking crazy. So whatever, however happened, like, we were friends for however long. I don't even remember. I don't think it was that long. Um and then we decided, I can't remember if we all moved into that house together. No, we were living there first. Somebody moved out and then she moved in, right? Yes. I, I don't remember. She took over a room. I can't recall who moved out or if, uh, you know, she needed a place to stay. And like if uh, uh, two of your sisters decided to double up um, in, oh. in, in a room. Um, I, I can't remember, but uh, we, we had the house and she moved, she moved in with us. That sounds right. Because, um, Tiffany, were, does that sound familiar to you? Like, you and Laurie were sharing? Yeah, we were sharing. I thought we all just moved in together at the same time. And and she was moving in, too. And that's why Laurie and I had to share. Because when the inevitable happened, I got my own room. And I and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then I never had to share a room with Laurie again. That's right. <laughs> Wasn't there a little, uh, we were talking about that house a little bit on the last episode we recorded because I was talking about the time I lit my face on fire when I tried to cook the Thanksgiving turkey <laughs> and I was talking mm-hmm. about the, the servant stairs, you know, that go up the, the back. And I just mm-hmm. remembered mm-hmm. there was that little kind of at, no, not attic space, but that little crawl space at the top of those that Laurie. You mean turned, that, yeah? that drug den? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it called a drug den? what do you do in there? <laughs> Drugs, Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, weird. Laurie had put up posters all over of like pictures of weed and you know, 
That's what I remember. It's just like pictures from High Times magazine. <laughs> nice. But it was a crawl space. Like you just could kind of sit in there just to smoke a little bit of pot, but not two people. No, two people. Okay. No, you could fit like seven people back there. It was like this short little hallway and then it opened up into a, like a storage room. Why wouldn't you just make that into a bedroom? It was too small for that. Okay. Oh, seven people. Same. Maybe maybe it's five people. I don't know. <laughs> but you had to sit in a circle. And you had to play the drums. And <laughs> you had to chant. No. <laughs> I was going through a phase. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so was it like a hippie drum circle or more like your Wiccan drum, drum circle? Oh, no. All hippie. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. yeah. Tiffany, I was going to say, what's the difference? <laughs> Tiffany was a major hippie, too. So it wasn't just me. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I wore hemp pants every single day at the that I lived in that house. The same hemp pants. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing. Anyway, that. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh yes, Amanda Exotic. Yeah. So we so we had all moved into this house, uh, and then all of a sudden, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who got hit first, but all of a sudden, shit started disappearing. Hey, I, you know, it, 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 you know, it's like normally like stuff that you don't notice, like, you know, like you, you go to like, you know, make a top ramen and it's not there anymore. Or you, it was like, you know, like, like shit out of the fridge, you know, like, you, you know, like everybody's buying their own groceries, you know, we're not like sharing groceries and stuff like that, but you would go to like, you know, like you plan on like, you know, having something for dinner and then you go and it, it would be gone. So it started like, just like with small things, like, that's um, right. Like, like, like your food. Uh, out of the kitchen, you know, like maybe your beers were getting drinking. The one, uh, the one that I remember um, is that I had like a change jar, and uh, I remember a lot of change going missing from my change jar. Mm-hmm. And I also, at one point before the big event that we're going to cover, um, I had had a um, some dental surgery, and I had a this other dental surgery, or, or for some reason I was prescribed uh, Vicodin, and uh, a, a bunch of the pills were missing. That's uh, right. Stuff. So it's just like, you know, it was like, you know, just like, we, like, like food, then change, then pills, and then whatever you guys were missing. Uh, yeah. stuff is kind of how I remember it starting. Yeah, that's right. And I remember, I don't know if BJ was living there with us at the time or if he was just staying over there because we were dating, but he had a whole bunch of change over there too because he was like working at the bar or whatever and they were always bringing in all the that change. And all of his change was gone, like 75 bucks worth of change or something was gone. Dang, it's a lot of change. Yeah, that that was their deal at the working at the Beaver. You right. know, they would always bring in all this. Oh yeah, no, I mean, these large, quarters yeah. and rolling their quarters and stuff. Yeah, so like, add up, man. Yeah, so that all that little stuff started going, and then and then I think Tiffany didn't Tiffany. What you had stuff missing, right? I think I had like a hundred dollars missing from my wallet, but I was drinking a lot at the time, and I assumed that I had spent it somehow and not realized. But so you, it was like, but you had so just cashed like, your paycheck though. You had just cashed well, your paycheck. Yeah, like the day before, and but we were drinking a lot. That's true, and but like it was like I didn't think I had spent it, but I wasn't certain enough, and you know, I trusted everyone we lived with, so like where would it have gone? Right, and like I don't, I don't want to like, get, you know, step out of line or anything, but I think like our paychecks were around like three hundred bucks, three seventy five or something, so a hundred dollars of that missing yeah. is like a fucking huge deal I, I don't i don't remember if anything of mine got stolen i mean i think i remember just like 10 bucks here and there but i don't remember anything major um but somebody the, slept over and there was 20 dollars missing from their wallet when they woke up oh that's right who was that i'm thinking it was dave sexy dave yeah, it could have been dave or it could have been uh because he stayed over a lot i think and Nestin maybe stayed over a lot but i'm not positive yeah, see, that's I, right. I think I remember that that Amanda had lived with Sexy Dave before she moved in with us. That's why she wanted oh, to move yeah, in with us. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's and then right. I, I, like, for some reason, I want to say it was, like, Crystal, and I, I don't know if she was still dating Eric at the time, but one of them might have been the uh, um, guys that was missing money. But, uh, but, but, yeah, I clearly remember one of our friends saying, hey, somebody took money out of my wallet and being, like, mortified. That would, yeah, that's be like I didn't do it yeah (laughs) so you got to imagine so like we're we're it's basically like me and and my family members and then Courtney who's basically a family member too like we had been you know best friends and roommates for years and years and years and years you know and and like so it's all these people that you 
absolutely 100% trust and you know that they would never do anything like that. At the same time, we have a lot of people over. We have a lot of friends over and a lot of people coming in and out of the house, too. So we're, like, starting to suspect our friends. We're like, you know, could this person have done it? No, they would never. You know, could this person have done it? And so we're starting to think all this horrible shit about our really good friends, you know, who come and go a lot. Um, And it was just, like, it really, like, from my memory, it really took a toll on, like, all of us, you know, because we're just losing trust in all, all of our friends and our whole circle because the stuff that started small just keeps happening and just keeps happening and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Does that sound? I, I think we floated the theory that it maybe was ghosts. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be ghosts because no one in this house would do it. I mean, for real. <laughs> I also think that that lady exotic helped um, to uh, found the, the ghost theory too. Um, oh, for but, sure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it does. It does, it does, like, it, 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 takes a, it takes a huge toll on you because you don't know, like, these people that, you know, that, that your family or your friends that you love and everything like that. You're just, like, you know, like, well, oh, my God, what if I'm wrong? What if, I, you know, what if there's something creeps going on? So, anyway. Yeah. And then, I want to hear more about how it was ghosts <laughs> and how that was even possible. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let's take a break. And uh, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about more See, about ghosts. Let's hear a word from our sponsors, <laughs> shall we? Let's hear a word <laughs> from our sponsors. You guys are going to love this. Wives 3 and 5 have you in the doghouse. Wives 2 and 4 experiencing shark week in their garments. Wife 1 just looking so much like ugh, old wife number 1. Have we got the solution for you. Why not give Prophets of Porno Polygamy Chatline a call? It's a choose-your-own-adventure here on Pops Chatline. You select the number of wives you want to chat with, sit back, and let the fun begin. When one of your pop wives just isn't cutting the casserole, push the number on your touch-tone telephone to switch over to your next dream wife. Best part? None of the wives on the Prophets for Porno Chatline are over 14. No nagging, and anything goes. The Profits of Porno chat line costs a nominal 11% tithing of your monthly income. But keep in mind, the more money you make, the more the babies bake. So call us now at one 888 moroni That number again is one 888 Profits of Porno is part of Heavenly Father's plan in four states. If the Lord invited you into his home, what would you wear? Would you go with a messy hair or a short skirt or unclean feet or stained baptismal clothing? Going to the temple is an invitation into the Lord's house. And baptizing the dead is a sacred and important responsibility. Don't you want to be looking and feeling your best? Well, now you can with Heavenly White. With Heavenly White all-purpose cleaner, your embarrassing stains will be whiter than Jesus. Heavenly White is a lifesaver around the house. But did you know that just a teaspoon of Heavenly White in your morning postum can help guide your soul on its path to spiritual glory? If impure thoughts, strong drinks, and too few offspring are jeopardizing your rightful place in the celestial kingdom, Try Heavenly White, now with the added stain-fighting power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly White is offering Family Home Evening with Bad Mormons listeners 20% off your first purchase. Just use the promo code COLAB at checkout. That's promo code K-O-L-O-B at checkout for 20% off your first purchase of Heavenly White. All right, so let's talk about this ghost theory. (laughs) (laughs) So, a ghost, I guess ghosts can misplace things, or, like, not misplace, but, like, move things around, right, in theory? They can totally steal $100 from your paycheck. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, in the ghost world, um, there is a definite need for uh, spare change and $100 bills and bike pins, you know, and definitely top ramen. You can secure um, protection in the ghost community if you have a pork-flavored top ramen and uh, seven quarters. (laughs) So... The ghost world is a lot like prison, is what I'm hearing. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to throw this out there since we're on the topic of ghosts. Not to get too derailed, but I want you guys to really think about this and pay attention to what you're wearing when you get dressed in the morning. Because 
As my friend Tiffany, um, not you, Tiffany, but my friend Tiffany in Hawaii, as she explained to me, if you die, whatever you're wearing is your ghost outfit. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is what got me to throw away half of my clothes. For real. Literally. No, for real. Like, I'd be like, well, Mandy, I might need this LeMay jumpsuit for a LeMay party. You don't know. She's like, you wear that tomorrow, you get hit by a bus. Are you okay with that being your ghost outfit for eternity? I'm like, no, put it in the trash. <laughs> she literally got rid of it, like three quarters of her clothes. <laughs> Say like half. Mine would have to be really flowy. Well, you better only wear flowy clothes from now on. But I hate flowy clothes unless I'm a ghost. <laughs> you got, you. Got, I don't know. Maybe you need to go to therapy and talk this out. Good, good point. <laughs> All right. I'm um, sorry. Slight, slight tangent on, on the, the ghost theory. So back to the ghost. So how, how was she <laughs> perpetuating the idea of like, oh, yeah, it's definitely ghosts. I don't think it was probably re- her, was it? I remember there was a like a large black bag at the back of the servant stairs or whatever. Um, that like out of the corner you of your eye, I always thought was like a goblin or something. Like it was like you'd be like oh, ghost, and you're like, oh no, it's just a black bag. But it was there forever. So I feel like maybe that played a part of it. <laughs> and also, plus, just like we we were just grasping at straws, really. Fair. I just thought maybe it was her idea and be like, oh yeah, ghost gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> it could have been. Also, like Sandy explained in the in the last episode, we were living in like one of those um, historical uh, registered houses and stuff like that. Right. Because you know, like, perhaps she was like, uh, you know, playing on the uh, fact that you know perhaps somebody died and the only thing that you know is going to keep them safe in the afterworld is Tiffany's hundred dollar bill. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So how how did you find out that uh, like <laughs> that it wasn't next? a ghost? Yeah, how did you find out it wasn't a ghost? <laughs> well, I don't know if I fully recall exactly what it happened, but we. I do. Okay, you take it away, Courtney. <laughs> so what happened uh, was Laurie, uh, Tiffany, and I we were getting ready to go on a road trip. Um, I had never seen uh, the Grand Canyon, and I believe that was one of the stops that we uh, that we had planned on going to. And the night before we left, like, we had uh, spent uh, packing, um, you know, packed up the car and everything. And uh, Laurie uh, had wanted uh, me to buy her beer, um, you know, like, for the trip. So, you know, pl- you know, plan is, you know, drive a little ways, go to our first stop, party and stuff. And Laurie's just like, yeah, could you buy me some beer? I don't have any cash. Here, why don't you take my debit card? And I was like, Cool what's your pin code <laughs> and uh she's she said it in front of all of us because like was mentioned earlier it's <laughs> you remember still <laughs> yeah did she just say laurie's pin well like she well, doesn't have that the same, same. <laughs> you hope not but you don't know <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we probably, probably should, uh, repeat it so maybe we could edit that out okay but it's, it's it's like he's it's like you said like you know like we're living in a house with sisters me, who I've lived with you, with most of you guys, like on and off for a gazillion years, and and her, um, who we thought that we trusted, and so anyway, I went and I uh, made some purchases for Lori, and then we came back, and uh, I believe that she had taken cash on this trip and had left the debit card at home, and that uh, like she had like saved up enough money, so like uh, her rent money and everything like that was still in her bank account, so we could go and take this trip that was going to be for like a week, and then we were going to come back home, and everything's going to be fine. That's right. Um, but we uh, got back from this road trip, and then uh, it came time to pay rent, and Laurie went to go get money to give whoever was going to write a check um, some cash, and uh, she didn't have any money in her account. At all? Um, and uh, Totally drained. It, like, no, like... Her account, was, her account was overdrawn at this point. Wow. Like, the, wh- whoever had uh, used her debit card had uh, gone to multiple... Um, ATMs and had done multiple um, m- multiple withdrawals on her uh, account. Yeah, I mean, so, the, whole, and, uh, the whole stealing is fucked, it, but draining it entirely is really fucked up. It's just like the look. It's, it's also like you know, like uh, you know, I I, I love the, the, the just the phrase "only the paranoid survive." Uh, and stuff, <laughs> but just like you know, when she like comes home and she looks at me, and she's like, "All my money is gone," and she's looking at me, and I'm just like, "What?" And she tells me, "Yeah, all my money has been withdrawn," and I'm just like, uh, "Lori, it wasn't me." You know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's just like such a scary thing to like, ha- you know, like the the median thing that you know, like I felt like I needed to do it. I needed to prove to Lori that you know, like, hey, I 
I didn't use your debit card. I know you gave me your PIN number, but you know, like I need, I, I need you to know it wasn't me. Right. And we had gone to a, we had gone to the credit union, and every ATM has a, a camera on it. And uh, we went to the uh, credit union that she used, and she said they, they said, well, yeah, all of these uh, withdrawals were made, but we can't give you footage without a police report. And Lori like looked over at me, and I looked over at Lori, and I was just like, let's go get a police report because I, I I I definitely wanted her to know I would never betray her. Right. And uh, we wound up going to the police department and talked to a detective, and uh, you know, like you know, her and I sat down and. Uh, explain the situation and he's just like so basically you want to know which one of your roommates is stealing from you you live with two sisters this gal and some other girl and she's like yeah and the detective looks at me he's like did you do it (laughs) no no and he's like i wonder who did (laughs) so so that's how that happened. Um, you know, like we we brought we brought it back to the house because, like Lori told the uh, Lori told the officer, like like reported it and told the officer she wanted it looked into. So they were going to open a case on it. We just came home and like told everybody, like had like a house meeting and told everybody what was going on and uh, you know like what had happened. And Courtney, do you Courtney, do you remember? And Tiffany, do you guys remember sitting around? in that little, like, living room parlor room or whatever and being on the phone with the police? Mm-hmm. So, so you guys uh-uh. you guys had already made the police report and then, because I was the one who was on the phone with them and we were just like, all right, we're just going to, you know, get this over with right now. Like, you know, we're done or whatever. So you guys, I don't know if, if you guys had made an official report or if we had to call to make the official report, but for some reason, like, we were on the phone with the police, like... <laughs> Laurie, it, yeah, Laurie and I immediately went down to the police department because it was it was that important to me to like you know just like make sure that my name was clear and uh, I was just like I you know I want you you know if the credit union will give us pictures of whoever took money out of your account I want I want to help facilitate that so let's go to the police department and we went down there and I think that we tried having a conversation with her where uh, she like you know like had denied it and, and basically i think that that's the point where we decided to call the police on speakerphone so then we then we called the police and the police basically said the same thing they're like so and it was a it was a female cop i was talking to she's like you know so you, so these are the people you're living with you know you're you've got two people you aren't related to she's like they can't hear me you know right. do, do you trust them and i was like well, well yeah one of them and she's like well then who do you think did it like you know all you got to do is think about it. There's only one other option. You know, right. she's like, ghost is not an option. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, so you know who did it then? And I was like, yeah, I guess I do. And um, I think what what ended up happening, Courtney, correct me if I'm wrong, is we told her we that, that we were going to see the footage the next day or something like that. Or we had already seen the footage, something like that. And that's when she confessed um, to doing Lori, it. Lori, Lori had said that, uh, like... I, Lori was super tough at that point in time and I was just kind of like you know coaching her on what she needed to do because like we had already talked to the cops and the cops were filing the report to get the footage and uh she uh like you know just flat out like told her why they were out like smoking or something like that that you know I just like yeah the footage is going to be in tomorrow so I'm going to find out you know like like who did it and uh she like spent the evening like going back and forth um to your sister you know like just being like well what if the person you know like was really sorry and wanted to pay you back what that's if the right person, like, blah, 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 blah. and uh it, it, and, and it, it eventually she came she came clean to to Lori and uh to, and told her that it was that it was her um and uh you know that's like kind of the only time that she admitted it and that was um, only under the threat she- of of police action of see of us actually seeing with our own eyes that it was right. her because this had been going on for for it months was, right it was under uh, it was under the threat of uh well yes yeah, if, uh, if it, what Laurie told her is like tell, tell her to tell her this if, <laughs> if you know if i if i have to see the pictures if i don't find out who did, if i have to go through all this trouble i'm pressing charges right and, uh, that's kind of like Good. what what made her she should have pressed charges uh, what, what anyways. Made her come forward i mean um, eventually you know it you know it's awful eventually like what wound up like happening is uh Lori Lori said she would not press charges and we all kind of like added up like the things that we felt like we, we had obviously every 
um, theft from Lori, and then we included the hundred dollars from Tiffany, and uh, like you know, like what what we felt was fair that she had stolen from us, and right. like we presented it to in in a letter to her, saying if you pay us all of this, um, the, it, like it was from Lori, so like if you pay us back all of this stuff, I will not press charges, and uh, I think her mom cut a check for that. Right, that's right. Well, at least you got your money back, and I'm, su- I'm assuming she got kicked out of the house. Oh, yeah, immediately. Yeah. <laughs> she cried a lot. There's a lot of vomiting. Really? Vomit yeah, cries? Yeah, she puked That's a lot. Intense. Yeah, vomit cries. She- oh, Tiffany, you forgot to talk about the journal she took from you, too. Well, that's because she was moving out, and I was like, this is my room. I'm going to go scope it out with her stuff in it, because I was very excited to have my own room. <laughs> and I w- I'm also very nosy, so I went through her stuff, and she had stolen things from my room. Uh, but one of them was like a a drawing book that dad gave me when I on my 16th birthday and she'd ripped out all my awesome wicked awesome drawings that I could never replicate <laughs> but they were really bitch. cool <laughs> I know. and then she just wrote about how cool Josh was and, oh that he did the best uh, Crocodile Dundee or like Steve Irwin impressions <laughs> and how he was so cute <laughs> and it was stupid and uh, and I ate some candy that she threw away Another thing, too, was that uh, the money that uh, was missing from Lori's account was also, like, around Halloween time where she was spending a lot of money on that one friend that we had, Uh um, like, buying him uh, Halloween costumes and stuff like that. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Like, Lori Lori bought some Halloween costumes for someone. Um, (laughs) I remember, actually, she was buying all of us stuff, which was another reason. She could buy us cigarettes and beer all the time. Yeah. Which was another reason why it was hard to believe that she was the one stealing, because she was always spending money on us. With, with your own money. Yeah. <laughs> I ruined a car of hers, so I feel a little bit vindicated, my own self. <laughs> what, tell that us was, that story, that Tiff. Awesome. It's not, no, it's not a good story. It's because I was learning to drive stick, and I ruined her transmission. <laughs> <laughs> but I can drive stick well, now. We were, we were getting ready to go on this on this trip, I, um, I, like, I was the only one who, like, knew how to drive. I think that Tiffany had a driver's license, um, but didn't know how to drive stick, and the car that we were taking on our trip was stick, and so, uh, uh, Amanda was just like, sure, you can practice in my car, um, because I think that Tiffany and I tried to practice in my car, and I was like, we should practice in someone else's car. <laughs> well, your car was a Honda Civic, right? And those are notoriously hard yeah. to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, d- I definitely didn't want you to hurt my Honda Civic. You know, when we were, like, kicking around this, the idea of doing this, uh, there was some hesitation, like, oh, should we do this? This is, like, so brutal to, like, out somebody or whatever. And I was like, fuck that. You know, she did this shit. And um, I think, Courtney, you said it best when you're, like, she never fucking apologized for that to yeah. any of no, us. No, she also went to all of her friends that were kind of our friends, but mostly her friends, and said that we were kicking her out for no good reason and that we were a bunch of liars and that you know she's been nothing but nice to us she never even admitted it to her friends obviously you don't oh, when you're yeah. a thief and her dad was a thief too like he was in jail for oh that's robbing right people. Ooh, that's right weird. i totally forgot about that i guess that's what you do you just turn around and try and ruin other people's characters so that you don't get caught being a ble- <laughs> you know a thief oh, for sure <laughs> so amanda exotic and her last name's not Tiger. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I've had some shitty roommates. Actually, I've been really lucky to have a lot of really, mostly really good roommates over the years. I've had some shitty ones, but she's by far the fucking worst roommate from hell I've ever had. I feel like I've had worse roommates. It, me? Tiffany, are you talking about me? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I guess the, there, there's the idea that you could live with somebody, like, especially if you're living with multiple people, there's the idea of, like, living with somebody who can make, like, life, like, you know, awful for everybody by, like, being a slob or being gross or, you, you know, just, like, you know, being an asshole and everything like that. But somebody that you live with that, you know, seems, like, so sweet and everything like that that can make you... Um, you know, question the integrity of your best friends and, uh, you know, the people that, you know, come to your house and everything like that. It, it, it felt, it, you know, oh, <laughs> we were robbed, but right. you know, we were robbed, uh, you know, of more than, uh, you know, like money, you know, it's like you, you know, you're robbed of your sense of security. So absolutely. Well, yeah. When people are really nice now, I'm like, there's something not right. I don't trust you. <laughs> and I'm always right. I'm like, oh, you're going to shop with white and hide at me. Yeah, exactly. 
But Courtney, on that trip, was that the one where like we stayed in a uh, motel where like the door didn't lock, and so we set up the beer can alarm, or is that a different trip? <laughs> that was a different one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that was that was when we were with Mandy and BJ. I think that that trip that we took, um, Richard somehow wound up with us. I think like I don't know if it was coming back or something like that. But that's when we uh, we stayed at a, a hotel in California on our way back up. And uh, it was it was like in Coalinga, California, which I think is also the home to like a prison, like a women's oh, prison good. or something like that. <laughs> and uh, right. they had when we went when we went to check in, like they had like a lot of migrant workers that were staying there, and so like they're like barbecuing and like somebody like killed a snake or something like that out there. I just remember checking in and stuff and having like the lady seemed like really racist, and she's like, "If any of those lettuce pickers bother you, that's you right. Can make sure you come up here and talk to me." And I'm like. I'm like, no, we're not, not going to do that. Uh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, it was a... But it didn't have a lock. So explain to me this can alarm. <laughs> <laughs> the door swung open, Charlotte. It swung into the room. And there's no lock on it. So what we yeah, did... So like the, 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 the padlock was not secure and the chain lock was not secure on there. And uh, I'm just like, I can't. There's no way I'm going to be able to sleep without like no protection or anything like that. <laughs> so we fashioned take it away Mandy we fashioned an alarm of empty beer cans so basically you know we did a stack of five then a four then a three then a two then a one so a pyramid in front of the door so that if anybody opened the door they would fall and you know alert us to to the presence of danger Smart. Uh, I also remember somebody throwing a full bottle of Budweiser at me in that room I, I was going to say I don't even remember because I was blackout drunk and you tried to wake me up. <laughs> Mistake. That's who it was. <laughs> I was like, it was either Courtney or Tiffany threw a full bottle of beer at my head. <laughs> I, I have mentioned before I'm not a good drunk. I was just going to say <laughs> Tiffany's a real bad drunk. <laughs> Tiffany threw the full beer bottle uh, at your head on that trip. I threw a shoe at your head um, on a, I think it was Tiffany's birthday trip to Las Vegas. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That was fun. Oh, my God. That trip. That'll, that's, a, that's a story for another episode. <laughs> Tiffany's 21st birthday. I don't remember a lot. I black out a lot. We should talk about all the places that I've blacked out. <laughs> and go. <laughs> there was the alley after the booze cruise in Florida. I don't remember it. So. <gasps> you know where my favorite my favorite blackout story is? Is that uh, I used to drive this, um, one of the Volkswagen buses that we've talked about before that my brother gave me. Inside one of them, there was a bed. And if you flipped the futon backwards, there was like a secret hatch under there where you, it was like where you kept the spare tire and you could keep whatever you wanted in there. It was a little storage spot. And one night we were drinking at 419, um, which was our friend's house. And we, we realized <laughs> late in the night that Tiffany was missing. Where Shocker. could she be? Where <laughs> could Tiffany have gone? And there's like, I don't know, probably 10, 15 people drinking or whatever. We go out on the hunt looking for her because she's nowhere in the house. We've searched every square inch of it. We start canvassing the neighborhood. It's like three hours go by that we're searching for her. We can't find her anywhere. And I can't remember if I looked or if she just popped out, but she had climbed into the van, climbed into that crawl space and put the mattress down so nobody could find her so she could take a nap. I was so fucking pissed. <laughs> Uh, my favorite was when we lived in Utah for a very short amount of time, and uh, Tiffany wanted to go feed the goats at the Logan Zoo, and I was like, That no. wasn't a blackout story, though. I remember all of that. You're still a dick. We were all <laughs> drunk, and we <laughs> couldn't find her anywhere. She snuck out a window. I should not have driven, but I got in the car to go find her because the zoo was not close, and... I pull up to her dragging an entire tree behind her, pretty much, uh, so she could go put it over the fence to feed the goats. And I'm like, you're a fucking asshole. Get in this car right now. I should not be driving. One time, my favorite, my favorite, one time I came to, and I was like, you know, where the fuck, where am I sort of a thing? But I had somehow, after taking like five shots of tequila with my roommate, uh, I woke up on the flat roof of our house in a puddle 
um, with like a big burn down my arm. I have no idea how that happened. And like, why was I on the roof? Oh, I remember that. <laughs> a burn in a puddle of water, was it, Tiffany? <laughs> yeah, on a roof, I woke up. <laughs> Sometimes I can't believe we're still alive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I black out rarely, but it's usually like when I get home, I know I'm in a safe space and I can go to sleep most times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't black out anymore because I'm a sophisticated adult. I'm really That's trying to get there. <laughs> really working hard. I think the last time I seriously blacked out was like two years ago at... Um, the San Juan Capistrano has a Swallows Day parade every year, and uh, this was Huskow Day, which is the day before. Everybody dress up country. You just drink a lot. I was a little hungover from the night before, and I woke up super early, and I went and started drinking Bloody Marys downtown, thinking I'll go home and take a nap in the middle of the day, come back out in the evening. Well, I just never went home, and I was just drinking like Coors Light. I wasn't drinking super heavy, but... Oh, no. By the end, like, I, I ended up going to a church um, for a fish fry, apparently. Um, I don't really like fish. I don't know what I was doing. I mean, I, people had invited me to go, so I didn't just, like, randomly walk into a church. But I should have been like, no, thank you. I'm going to stay at the bar and black out faster and go home. <laughs> and not burst into flames when I walk into a church. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think... That's the last, like, that was, I was browning out around that point, and then <laughs> when I got back to Mission Grill, I'm going to say it doesn't exist anymore, uh, that's when I was like, hey, home. <laughs> <laughs> how, long, how long ago would you say that was, uh, Charlotte? Two years ago, because we didn't have Swallows Day this year, so I want to say it was either, my, it was either last, so actually I think it was like three years ago. Yay me. Why did I black out with... Oh, shit. <laughs> or maybe it was the time I was in San Diego hanging out with Courtney. <laughs> well, I don't remember. I was blacked out. <laughs> so it didn't happen. I don't know if I could tell Courtney's anyway, story. I just, I, just, I, just want, oh, go again. I just wanted to make sure that you hadn't forgotten about that one. Um, turns out... I was sleepy. I wasn't blacked out. I was sleepy. The very last time I blacked out was like six months ago. And I don't remember, obviously I don't remember leaving the bar, but I came to at my friend's house high on mushrooms. I don't remember when I took mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. It was the worst. You were on Marco Polo with us because you were like, you were video. You were on video. If we go back, those are saved somewhere. And you were like, I "I'll delete them." You were like, "I ate mushrooms. <laughs> I ate some mushrooms." And we were like, "Holy shit, Tiffany! You're wild, you're wild girl! You're crazy! Why like Spice Girls?" <laughs> and I was reaching out, right? Was the whole reaching world out. coming to an end? <laughs> One of my favorite times was we were sitting around watching movies at your and Courtney's house up on Indian. Courtney was not feeling great um and she's drinking a lot of wine and then i just look over and she, you know you're wearing a hoodie like you do and you just grabbed your like wrist of your hoodie and just puked in your sleeve and it was the like <laughs> most badass shit i've ever seen i was like Courtney just puke in her hoodie <laughs> and then you got up took a shower and went to bed <laughs> i learned i learned that from uh no, I guess I, I, I guess I did not, uh, because I had not met Dave and Allison in uh, San Francisco at that point in time. <laughs> yes, peace and much better before uh, Dave and Allison uh, told me that it was okay to do so. <laughs> I applaud you. Coach, what, what can't that man do? Right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we usually like to end our episodes with a little, you know, bitching about how much the world fucking sucks and then talking about what we can do to make it better. And lately, all I have is following different social media accounts than I follow now because that's where I see a lot of the fucking bullshit that happens, like people treating retail workers like shit or Trump speaking or really just Trump speaking is the worst thing that I can think of that's happening in the world. So, um... One of the things that I have found that actually brightens my day a little bit that I want to uh, share with all of you guys, you already know, Charlotte, is uh, the Leslie Jordan 
Instagram slash him. Facebook account. He, I don't know if you guys remember who Leslie Jordan is. If you go and find him, um, you'll remember. He's absolutely this delightful old Southern man, and he <laughs> will dance and sing and perform for you on social media, and it's so fucking great and so fucking adorable. So, Tiffany, I know you're not on social media. I've seen it, though. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so fucking great. So that's my little, um, you know, be excellent to each other. I don't know if you guys have anything you want to share that makes the world a little less fucking stupid. If you know anybody who's really good at impressions, having them do, uh, like, Bane quotes, but in Trump's voice is the most <laughs> hilarious thing I've ever witnessed. I have Josh do it all of the time, like, every time I work with him. I was going to say, I was going to say Josh. Josh. It's got to be Josh. <laughs> it's wonderful, really. Let's not say, I can't do, a, I cannot do a good Trump, but it's just, it's awesome. Or you can have Bane say Trump things, and that works too. What's the likelihood that Josh will come on this podcast and do that for all of our listeners? Zero. It's absolute zero. <laughs> God damn it. We're going to need you to sneak some audio. <laughs> Dude, I would your phone. Crush your then we'll get him to sign a... Uh, sign an NDA Release? or no we sign the NDA well figure out the legal stuff I'll figure that out later and yeah we're gonna make this happen just make him think he's <laughs> signing an autograph <laughs> I'm the biggest fan I'm the biggest fan Josh signed this autograph <laughs> you released it it's fine <laughs> Charlotte you got anything no not really I mean I hate everybody <laughs> I've just been deleting people on Facebook but I think that's what I said last week too like, I and I hate to say just it. Just delete Facebook, sure. I can't. But anyways, I just, I, and I know it's terrible. And I like having, like, friends of different uh, opinions. But frankly, if you just have Trump 2020 in your profile picture, thank you. I'm immediately deleting you. I just, I don't want to see in your shit. I don't want to see. You can like Trump all day long, but if you're the type of person who has your profile picture in a bubble that says Trump 2020, I don't need you in my, my news feed. Bye. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing to make my life excellent. <laughs> you got anything, Courtney? I, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it makes my life excellent, excellent, but uh, hopefully it like makes other people feel better. But Joe and I, like uh, any time that we wind up in a store or um, like, you know, like at a place that offers outside uh, seating for dining and stuff like that, we find ourselves ourselves overcompensating and being like uh, extra super friendly because we know how shitty people are being to That's grocery great. checkers and uh, grocery stockers and, uh, you know, like servers and stuff And uh, during this time. And it's just like, you know, like they, uh, you know, they, they are the frontline workers and uh, I, I, I will gladly spend uh, the extra time to make sure that they know, number one, thank you, and number two, I appreciate you, and uh, yeah, it's... I love that. That's that's kind of of what we're doing. Yeah, I wish, I think everybody should do that, because it really, like, you don't think it goes a long way, but it really goes such a long way. Right? Well, yeah, Mandy and I, we went out... I was just saying, we we just took extra, and she's just like, thank you so much, like, it's an awesome tip, but that just, my night has been such shit, and you guys just made it better for me or whatever and it's just like oh see and that's why we do it mm-hmm. you can definitely tell at our stores that we go into that like just like saying you know like an extra thank you and i appreciate you you know like it's it means so much to somebody who probably like five minutes ago had to like get spit on by like some asshole that wouldn't uh, put their mask on or something and right. uh, you know it's you know it's weird they're living in tip tents Right. Yeah, it fucking sucks. I can't wait for this to be over with, and it's. I know it's a long way away, but actually, I gotta interject. Dad said it could be over anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank the Lord, Nick Carter. <laughs> Did I just say the Lord Nick Carter out loud? That's something I usually think in my own head. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that you guys came on and. Uh, I, I just want to remind everybody out there, um, if you could, you know, give us a like on uh, the Apple Podcasts, leave us a review, leave us a rating, and also give us 10% of your income going forward for the rest of your life, we would really appreciate that. Great, that's thanks. the tithing that you're going to have to pay for listening to this podcast. We should have told you, <laughs> but that's in the in the clause. Oh, but. yeah. Also go on Facebook and Instagram and, and, you know, like us and 
It's shit. <laughs> Tell us we're pretty. <laughs> Tell us you care. <laughs> <laughs> we're so sad. Just kidding. I'm fucking awesome. I know I'm awesome. I'm <laughs> so let's see. I'm Mandy. I'm Charlotte. Tiffany. <laughs> I'm Courtney. Yay. <laughs> and we made a podcast. <laughs> Hooray. Thanks for uh, thanks for drinking with us the at this episode of Family Home Evening. And we'll see you next time with Bad Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> the worst Mormons. <laughs>